So we're, we're going to talk, let's talk about the interaction diagram and just a little bit of background on it. So interaction, can you see the screen? The green color? Okay, so interaction diagrams, excuse me, and with the interaction diagrams, right? So here, what, the interaction diagram is, is essentially a way to look at the combined loading effect, okay? So to evaluate the purpose is purpose is to evaluate a combined loading effect, okay? Combined loading effect. Uh, I realize since I'm co collecting audio, why do I have to write it down, right? You know, right? Anyway, right? It's to evaluate a combined loading effect where we have on a cross section, we have an axial load in, typically in compression, okay, PU, and a moment MU here, okay, all right. And, and what we do agree is that each of these causes a, a stress and a strain on the cross section, okay. So, so this, if by superposition, we would break this up, we would say this axial load, PU, causes a uniform strain, which I will show in red, a uniform strain here, okay, uniform strain, epsilon c. So this axial load causes a uniform strain, and the moment part causes a, what type of profile? A linear strain profile with tension, compression on one side, tension on the other, and some neutral axis, okay? All right. And, and what we want it to satisfy, if if you could, if you can imagine this, is that we want we want to satisfy the basic design relationship here. We want to satisfy phi p n greater than or equal to p u and phi m n greater than or equal to m u. Okay, all right. Phi n. We want to satisfy those two things. All right. And, and but what we, what the challenge is, you know, we know that this strain profile here really looks like it could look anywhere from something like this you know depending on the compression on one side tension to to something like this depending on what the magnitudes or uh, or the intensities of these forces and moments are okay our strain profile could be a number of things right and we want to know a way to do that to solve for this the other issue that we have here, the interaction diagram, is, is essentially this, is that we want to combine both of these. So the way that we're going to combine both of these two basic design relationships, right, is, is okay, so in a, again, a very simple way, algebraically, we might say that this right here is just like if I said this is one, I would be satisfying my dis basic design relationship if one is greater than or equal to PU over phi Pn. Would you agree with that? I just divide both sides by phi Pn. And then I do the same thing here. 1 is greater than or equal to oops, mu, mu over phi Mn right here. Okay? And, and I, I'm just going to – what I want to say now is, okay, also – if I, so basically I want both – I want each of these things to be less than or equal to 1 if – you know, if I only have a moment or if I only have an axial loading, okay? So a, a way for me to combine these maybe is to say, well, if I have PU over phi PN plus MU over phi MN less than or equal to 1, okay? Then, hey, I am – this is – I'm okay, okay? So this is kind of a – a, a way to combine, combining two basic two of two basic design relationships. Okay, and the reason I can do that is because you know each of these cause each of these the axial load and the moment cause normal strains and normal stresses. Okay, the normal to the surface, so I can uh, to the cross section, so I can I can combine them. All right, that's I can't combine shear because shear is acting parallel to the section. Okay, it's in a, it's in a totally different direction. Okay, so so the idea here is that okay, well, well, shoot, if I have the interaction diagram now, this interaction diagram, I've got okay, I've got some contribution of 
PU over VPN on one side and another combination of MU over VMN on another side right here. If I have if I have a high axial load contribution, right? Okay, if this if if this is close to one, then obviously my MU over VMN is zero. Right? Okay. And then as my PU over VPN decreases, right, my MU over VMN increases, okay? And if this were a very nice linear elastic material, this is what it might look like, okay? And, and my safe region would be anything in here, okay? Okay, this would be my safe region, safe region. Anything less than that red line, and this 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 red line would be equal to one, okay? The design it would be it would satisfy the basic design. It would be satisfying this inequality, this inequality. So so basically, the safe region means that this PU over VPN plus MU over VMN are less than or equal to one, okay? So that that this inequality is true, okay? Yes, that's what it looks like for timber. It's, this is what it looks like for steel, because those are, you know, and, and it's just a, uh, uh, but for concrete, you know, we've got, we've got some unique characteristics with respect to the strain profile and the capacity, okay? And so with concrete, what we have, you know, you have a, you can't calculate, you know, right here, what you what we have here is you have, if you have a cross section, so for, for a given, given cross section in reinforced concrete okay you could apply the same approach right but you have to know what the strain profile is okay you have to know what the, and you have to know where the neutral axis is to figure out what the um you know like the you have to know what that is so you can figure out what the moment capacity is right okay and and, and all these things have to satisfy equal so if i have a a cross section so let's say i have the cross section here you know with some area of steel you know boom 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 here and and let's just say that the moment is about this axis so here's xx right so i have bending about this xx axis right here and if i if i look at this here you know i've got I got this. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, I got this moment. I'm sorry. This axial load and mu applied to it. Okay. You know, and I, I want to know what the strain profile is. I, I might know that one side is at ultimate, right? Okay. So I what I want to know is, you know, is my capacity, is my capacity, is my p n p sub n. P sub n and M sub n, are they sufficient to, to overcome what's going on, right? Are the materials that I have, that I chose, are they good enough? But the problem is not only are these two undefined, right? M sub n and P sub n undefined, okay? But my neutral axis location is undefined, right? So I don't know what, what C is. I don't, I don't know what, um, what, I don't know what is C and A. Okay, so I have, and the only equations I have available to me, what are the equations I have available to me? I have equilibrium equations. I have some of the moments, some of the moments, and I have some of the axial forces. Uh, I'll just call it some of the F, okay, some of the axial forces. I have these two equations to, left to me to determine three unknowns. Okay, so I need another tool, right? I, what, so what the interaction diagram is, this interaction diagram that we develop right here is, is essentially, if you will, this interaction diagram is, is a plot of all the possible CNAs, okay? Because each CNA corresponds with a specific strain profile. Would you agree? Right? Each CNA corresponds with this per, like a strain profile. So, so I have... I could guess from whatever the number is here, all incrementally, all the way through to ultimate, okay? Right? I can guess a CNA from, I can guess a CNA from the, the entire cross-section, okay? 
a CNA of the entire cross section or uniform compression all the way to t uniform tension, which is over here. Okay, this is so here is uniform compression all the way to uniform tension here. Okay, that is essentially what I'm doing. Okay, I am guessing a strain profile that varies all the way. This point is a balance point here of epsilon cu right here. This is epsilon cu and this is epsilon y. This is balance failure, okay? So I am incrementally guessing to create this interaction diagram a bunch of CNAs, okay? And I, I'm looking at, you know, 0 0.003, uniform strain and compression all the way to uniform tension, okay? So this is uniform compression and this is uniform tension tension and 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 this this balance failure is one other specific cna value that has some significance why does it cut back it, it's just it, it's because well it cuts back why does it cut back let's see how would i explain let's see if this is phi if this is like that, you know, the moment relationship, M, M, and P sub N right here, okay? It's because of the uh, the strain, okay? It, it, the axial capacity keeps reducing and the moment capacity kind of reduces too, right? Because, oh, let me think off the top of my head. Shoot. I, I would say because if you look at the strain profile, right, going this way, going this way down right here from the balance failure, your CNA is getting smaller, okay? Your CNA keeps getting smaller here. Uh, you know, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. Your, your, your depth to the compression neutral axis, it keeps getting smaller and smaller, right? So, so this point right here, it's not always here. It's not always the largest, okay? Sometimes it extends out this way and then transitions too even, okay? The balance point is not always the, the tip, okay? Right? It's not always, that's not always true. If you look at some of your design interaction diagrams, that's not always true. I just draw, this is, it's a common condition, but the, um, it just depends on the cross-section geometry and the depth. Because, you know, if the CNA is at one location, then you have steel that could be in compression, right? Or in tension, right? And, and, and it's especially if you have steel right in the middle, you know, that, 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 that can alter, right? With your tension capacity. I, I don't know if that answers your question well. Yeah, if you look at look at look at the design charts in the appendix of your book, and, and you'll see that that CNA is not I'm sorry, not CNA, but the balance failure point is not always the the uh, largest maximum moment. This M sub N to the interaction diagram. Okay. Exactly. We're basing, we're, we're going not by, because it's easier to do an incremental change in the strain profile, right? All the, and, and all the way from 0 0.003 compression, so this would be like epsilon CU compression, all the way to epsilon Y tension, okay? All right? It's easier to do that as opposed to guessing what, um, to, to incrementing CNAs. But you know, you notice the first thing you do with a given strain profile is determine that CNA, right? Okay. So here, let me stop this. Let me stop real fast. Sorry.